four. So again, if you want to go back and watch those first, maybe you'll follow along a little better. We had been talking about top three things that we want to change in the world, kind of got to go through them briefly. He mentioned preventative medicine, and I was very interested in hearing more about that topic. So we talked a little bit last week about how like what he means by that. I'll start with this. There are a lot of big things that I want to change in the world. I would also within that need like not, they can't just be big and abstract. I need to find like places in which I can be part of that process. And for like, we've talked a lot about different things that you and I are doing for like to take care of the earth. Like I'm no longer eating meat because I don't think it's ecologically sustainable and that is one of those little individual things that I can do in order to see like a cleaner healthier earth for like a cleaner like healthier body and like people that's something that I have not particularly thought all that much about and I don't think that I was taught a lot about it throughout life and I am just kind of getting into it now as I'm just barely starting get it, to get into the age where like my diet actually really really affects me <laughs> and so it's become a lot more interesting all of a sudden whereas I could just eat a bunch of junk food and ice cream four years ago and it was fine but now <laughs> I feel sick. So that's what I've been thinking about uh, more so, especially throughout the last six months where like the whole idea of anything medical is an overwhelming anvil of anxiety on top of everybody's heads. It, I should explain a little bit where I'm coming from here in that uh, we weren't a family that went to the doctor a whole lot growing up. We just kind of, my mom was always um, the one who knew how to fix it, like drink water or do this or do that, or like, here's a bandaid. Um, so I was never very reliant on that system and not currently, but for about a four year span, I didn't have health insurance and I couldn't afford to have health insurance. Um, so I didn't, I, I continued to not rely on that system. And I think there are definitely things that I would like to change about that, but I know that those aren't things that are going to change quickly. And so what I'm currently interested in looking for are ways to do those little personal steps that will improve my health and improve my knowledge about health and nutrition and ways in which we can all be healthier. And some of those changes we've already done. I mean, I didn't choose to be vegetarian for health reasons, but I think that it has helped. <laughs> I'm, I'm Graham, you are the expert in this, but I am so bad at like keeping track of progress. And I'm a little bit inspired. I, I haven't quite gotten to it yet because it's only been a week and I am, it takes a lot to really motivate me to do anything daily. <laughs> um, but I liked your idea of like, you keep track of everything, like how yeah. you feel and what you're like monitoring yourself so that those times when you need to call upon an expert and that's available to you, you can hand them that information and they can help you go through it. Yeah. So that was a, a lot from me on what I've been thinking about this week. Uh, how about how about you? How has this been going through your head this week? I am going to have to run the risk of being extremely personal with you. Hmm. Um, but, you know, we've we've got to know each other now. Um, over this Zoom thing. So I think I can do that. I have a very good friend who emailed me. She was very upset by last Sunday. Mm. She was upset by you putting an age on yourself and saying you don't really expect to live beyond a certain age. And this actually caused her a lot of pain personally for because she loves you now. She knows you enough. She doesn't like the idea of you passing away early. And she said, can, can she say something else about that? Because she just raised it and left it there. Now, <laughs> this is so personal. If you don't want to go beyond that, you know that I will just move straight along. But if you, if you would help me mm. as well, I need, I, it was very odd. It was an odd moment. Yeah. Um... I didn't expect me saying that to hit me the way that it did. So I kind of wasn't able to speak immediately after I initially said that. I think definitely a lot of that comes from 
because like talking to a doctor is not something that's financially accessible to me a lot of the time like I kind of recently went into a doctor knowing that um my health insurance is in Washington and it wouldn't work here. I asked how much it would cost and they were like, oh, somewhere between $700. And then as I left, they were like, that'll be $160. I'm like, well, <laughs> like, why did you tell me that it was going to be something else? But anyway, moving beyond that, um, I just kind of have an idea like deeply ingrained in my head that there'll be something wrong that I won't, nobody will catch and I won't be seen and it'll just get worse and I won't like go to the doctor because I don't want to cause financial burden on my family. And I, I think that there's more hope in that the more I put myself into learning about how to care for myself outside of a doctor and medication and whatever their solutions always are. In that doctor visit, I asked straight out, is there something that I can do like dietary wise or like exercise wise? Is there something that I can do in my life that if it is these things that you're not sure about, that would help? And she just said like, no, just keep doing, you know, just keep, you're a healthy young 26 year old, just keep doing your thing and keep going through life. And I'm like, how do you not have anything to say there? You don't like, not even just say like the cheesy, like, oh yeah, you know, eat your greens an apple a day, whatever. Like, I feel like there's just a wealth of information that I, I haven't sought out. And because of that, not just because I haven't sought that out, but because I feel like I don't know where to go for it. That doesn't cost $160 every time, you know? Um, So yeah, it's, it's partially, um, I've had a decent number of family members die, but like they've died earlier than they probably could have. Um, And so I think that there's part of that that's like weighing on me, like my grandparents on my mom's side both died in their 50s and 60s. And um, just the idea of like a lingering underlying disease that I will never know about until it's way too late. Just that the balance between those two things is kind of what gives me that feeling that I won't make it very long. (laughs) Okay. It's also fairly intimidating to think about living that long, but yes, yeah, I'll get there when I get there, I guess. <laughs> yeah, we, we have a way of doing that. <laughs> well, I find myself with a degree of affection for you and would like you to be well. And I'm sure that your husband feels much more than I do, but certainly the same. And I know your parents too. So you are, regardless of the um, position that you may be taking, you are surrounded by people who love you. And there is a certain responsibility that you have, I think, to people who love you. They would like you to be well, and therefore you would be well because it's your way of loving them back. I remember saying to my wife, Trina, once uh, upon a time, would tell me, tell these people, because we were in the hospital at the time, tell these people, would you, um, just exactly why it is that you do what I ask you to do with your health, because I know you're not very interested in it. And she said, I know I do it because you love me, and it's the only way I have of letting you know that I understand that and I'm loving you back. Mm And that's what she said. So what I decided to do is I decided to write myself um, a bunch of notes about my life. Now, this is a a very interesting diary in London. It's the first people to ever print a diary, um, which was also a journal. And I get one of these every year. It's just, it's an, ex- an expense, it's about $11. Um, but I fill it in every single day. There isn't a single day of the year when I do not have that filled in. At the top of the page up here, I write what I have eaten. Now I pulled this book out at random. This is 2001 and I've opened it at random. For breakfast, I had oatmeal and a flax biscuit. I had a papaya salad with baked beans. Gosh, 
<laughs> and for, for my supper, I had a lamb chop and a sausage, small carrots, a hard boiled egg, and some potato mayonnaise. Um, and I had iced diet tea with that. Uh, that was on Thursday, June the 21st. <laughs> now, I can go back well, since, uh, since 88, so 88 onwards. I can go back and I can tell you exactly From what 1988? I, 1988. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I can go back and tell you exactly what I ate during that time. I do that every morning and still have and still do it today. Why I do it today? Because I'm, I'm very well. I'm a very um, fit guy uh, for my age. Uh, <laughs> um, but I wasn't at one stage. I, as a galloping gourmet, I had a, a 290 cholesterol, which is not a good cholesterol number at all. It's total cholesterol. And I had gout. Um, and I was 34 years of age with gout. Um, and my doctor said to me, well, I guess with an occupation like yours as an international gourmet, you're not going to avoid being overweight and have gout and that sort of thing. So mm -hmm. that's it. So I was, it was just, I was just accepted. We'll just make the best of it you can with your occupation. So I pulled that U-turn and started to live healthily. And when Trina had the stroke and heart attack, which was after I made that U-turn, I took it very seriously indeed, because I love that woman so deeply. And, um, and yet I didn't want to fuss over her every day. I, I did what I did and I kept notes about what I had done so that I could watch her diabetes and hypertension and blood sugars and, and, and blood pressure and, and the whole bit. And I, I made notes of all of those things so that I could compare what, she, what I cooked for her to how she responded to that. Mm. And very gradually, she got better and better and better over 28 years of life after a stroke and a heart attack. Now, I could not have done that if I hadn't made those notes. So I've come to, over this last week, what is the most important single thing that I could say to you is, get yourself a journal. It doesn't have to be a fancy thing like this, and then keep it up every day. It's going to be a, a habit. It's going to be a new habit for you. And that's not easy to get into. But if it's just a legalism, something you think you ought to do, it won't work. Mm -hmm. you actually have to love. Your husband's name is Jacob, right? It's you loving Jacob through your choices. You're you're saying, you love me, Jacob, and I love you, and I want you to know I'm going to take care of myself because you love me. It's my way of responding. I think, And I did that for Trina, and I jumped into the same foxhole with her, and that's the reason I'm 86. With the same blood chemistry, the same, blood, the same weight, the same blood pressure that I had when I was 67. <laughs> you know? So... When is the time of one's life when you need to start to do this? When you're 26. <laughs> no, and I'm not just making that up. Medical profession know that at 26, you reach the, the, the best that your growth of your body is, is going to top out at 26. From then onwards, you'll plateau for a long time and then the decline will come. But if you keep a register of this, but eventually you can get a little thing like this, which is a blood pressure cuff. You can then have something like this, which is your oxygen uptake, and which you can put your finger in, and it will tell you what your oxygen uptake is, which should be in the high 90s. Then if you're going to go for do some exercises, 
you're going to wonder about me. <laughs> <laughs> this is my daily record of exercise, all right, in which I put what my oxygen uptake is, the number of paces I do in 10 minutes. So I'm always challenging myself about um, when I came to live here, I was doing about 986 when I came here. I'm now doing 1,110. So I'm actually walking a brisk pace. Now I'm measurable. Now, why I'm, am I competitive? What is that about me? Am I obsessive compulsive? Um, I, I, people ask me because of the way that I have lived my life, how do you get to be um, as energetic as you are and as well as you are at your age? And I can tell them, I have an exact record of how I got here. And there are a lot of people today who are really, really sick in their 60s and 70s. And they don't know how they got there. All they did was live from day to day, simply going along. So if, I don't know whether that helps you at all. Um, yeah, I think that you've, you've figured something out that I don't think any or most of my teachers throughout the years ever really figured out, which is the actual, I think you actually understand where my motivation comes from in saying that like, you're not doing this for yourself. You're doing this for the people that love you. And, yeah. and as a way of showing love, like that's a, like actually really motivating, even though all this <laughs> stuff sounds extremely intimidating and something I'm horrible at doing. There was once when I was very determined, I had shaved my head just to see what my hair looked like shaved because I was going to study abroad. So I didn't really care what anybody thought. And I was determined to take a picture of myself every single day to like be able to make a little video of my hair growing. And I was, I didn't, I just, I took a, I would take a picture one day and then like three days later, I'd be like, oh my gosh, I was going to take a picture. But like, that's not motive. Like that's, there's not motivation in there. That's for anybody, but me just yeah. like a fun yeah. project. That's not, but there's, it's things like that, that make me believe that I am horrible at doing the same thing every day. Like I'm even horrible at remembering to brush my teeth every day, but that's so, if, if it's the motivation is more like a way of showing love for other people that's so much more like doable. <laughs> I think that's wonderful. And I'm, and I'm wrestling now with wondering what on earth I can come up with uh, for the thing to ponder for the thing coming up. <laughs> but but let, let me say this to you. If a thing, if a thing doesn't start with love, it's probably going to go nowhere. Right? And that's why we as a nation need to be more in love with each other as citizens so that we won't have the kind of death rate we have from the COVID thing. And we won't have the obesity levels and we won't have the heart disease and diabetes and everything because we just love each other more. It means something more. There's so many things we can do which are political or logical or even religious as well, thinking that's the right thing to do, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. No. If you love somebody, then let the love lead. Don't let legalism lead. So don't be legalistic about this. Do it because you love and you're loved. Okay, good. I just have to find a well, notebook that has really bad quality paper. So I stopped stealing it for art stuff. <laughs> All my notebooks have like so many pages just ripped out of them. <laughs> I am a Scot and I want you to know that it isn't easy for me to make this next statement. But this year I will order two of my Let's of London diaries and I will send one to you as a Christmas present. So you oh. don't have to look for it. It, it, it. You can't start it until the new year because it starts on January 1st. Um, but you that will be my little gift to you. So you can start to get ready to do it. <laughs> over the next. You. You're very welcome. <laughs> okay, so let me tell you that one of the things that you raised, which was the watering of your plants and your praying and thinking of your friends that you've left behind um, when you moved, I, that got to me 
in a, in a major way. And so I have been watering my giant uh, umbrella plant. And the moment that I started to do that, one of the junctions where you get two wispy things that come up either side, and then you know there's going to be something that's going to come through the middle. And one popped out of there right after I started that one. And that's Feliciana. And she is in, um, uh, in Guatemala. And my other young person down in South America is Noel. He's seven. And I was, I've got both of their pictures now in, right there by the side of the umbrella plant. So that I can, when I water it, I can pray for Feliciana because I can see her and she has rapidly grown out and developed the leaves over the top. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, the other morning was a little sprout, which, <laughs> and um, it's growing and that's Noel. Now, I'm not sure whether you quite get what you have done for me in this regard. I need to water that plant. I don't water plants easily. <laughs> I always forget them and they die. It's a, I have a brown sun when it comes to houseplants. But you taught me something in doing that because I love these two kids. Then I can, now I can love my plant. So if that works for me, then it could work for you. So what I want to do is to look back over some of our discussions that we've had together. But we've been meeting together, it's, it's over 20 times now. Um, yeah, and so I want to know, I, I, I just shared with you something that made a lot of difference and I know I can find other things as well. But I'd like you to to go back over what we've talked about. And let's talk about that next time. That would be so good. And can I say to um, our viewers, quick thing, is that okay? Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> listen guys, we're really going through a tough time with regard to politics at the moment and you can be left or right, I, we don't care about that. But um, don't let's fall out of love with each other. And this ugly division that we have at the present moment is nothing like who we are. So just take a deep breath and just wander through it and, uh, and look at the pathway, which is the other side of this, so that we can get back together again and enjoy our lives as we should. Okay. Thank you, my dear. It's lovely <laughs> to be with you. <laughs> All right. So this week we will be going back through all the things we've talked about over the months and months now that we have been talking weekly um, and seeing the changes that have come in our lives or like the different little moments that have really yep. affected us and done something in our life in some way. Um, we'd also, if you've been following along since the beginning or you just got here, maybe go back and check out some of our older episodes but we'd love to hear if anything from our older episodes have gotten to you as well um so if you could leave that down in the comments uh that'd be great so that's what we will be thinking about this week thank you so much for watching this has been t at three i'm faye schmidt this is graham care and we will see you next week and please do subscribe if you're not already and leave a like on the video if you enjoyed watching thanks so much <laughs>